Good evening, everybody. My name is Lisa Field. I'm president of the Labor Guild, and I am very excited tonight to be here with members of the Massachusetts chapter of the, of course, now I'm going to blank on it, <laughs> the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists. Oh, got a little bit of a blank there. So thrilled to have them here. Um, a little bit about the Labor Guild before we get started. We're a nonprofit out of Braintree, Massachusetts. We actually um, promote good labor management relations. We believe that the collective bargaining uh, process is in, so important to not only promoting um, wage equality and justice within the workplace, but it also promotes vibrant democracy. And any of us who have been in a good, good union meeting know <laughs> we've seen democracy at work. We might disagree, but then we come together in order to move forward. So we're just thrilled to have the folks from CBTU with us. And with that, I'm gonna have Jamie uh, Wallace introduce himself. Jamie. Yes, good evening, everyone. My name is Jamie Wallace. I'm a member of the International Union of Painters at Allied Trades, District Council 35. I am a union glazer by trade. For those of you that are unaware of the work that a glazer performs, we are the men and women that install any and all glass in the low rise and high rise buildings in your cities, towns, and states. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Anita, do you want to introduce yourself? I can. Thank you. My name is Anita Bruno. I'm a 20 year union carpenter um, and uh, fighting with CBTU for rights and equality. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And Jamie, do you want to talk a little bit about CBTU? Like, who do you represent? What's the mission? Yes, CBTU represents primarily uh, Black workers, but all workers in general. There are 61 CBTU chapters across the country, including Canada. And so we, we basically work for, for safe work sites, uh, make sure that the workers have uh, dignity and respect on the job sites. And, and that, you know, it's a wholesome environment uh, for the men and women to show up to on, on a daily basis. So we're, we're, we're a strong advocate for, for, for fairness and inequality. And what are some of the things that you do? You know, do you have specific projects? Do you have specific policies? Well, there's one particular project we're working on. We've had some success with it. Um, last well actually this past january we had our inaugural mlk day brunch mm -hmm. and so we myself and the members of my chapter we come together and we drafted up a letter and we had it sent through brian doherty to all the local labor unions throughout the greater boston area to when we asked them to honor mlk day in their upcoming contracts and as of now, we've had five local unions um, grant our request. Now, I'm not sure if it's certain because of the letter we put out or they were gonna do it already. And we just so happened to ask them for it, but however, it has happened. But we have a host of other local unions that we're working on, including my district council 35, that uh, does not honor MLK Day as a building trades holiday. However, they still grant me um, the right to host our MLK Day event at our local union hall. Wow. So our, our contract is up in 2025. So about a year and a half from now, and that's on the forefront of our contract to get MLK Day put into our contract. And so can you talk a little bit about, I'm gonna ask you a building trades question because I'm not from the building trades, I'm from uh, the nurses union. Can you sure. talk a little bit about the contract and what it's like for a building to be in the building trades? You know, like the nurses, we have a contract at a local hospital, but for mm -hmm. the building trades, it's a little bit different. Can you explain that? Yeah, the building trades, yeah, it's a lot different than your locals. <laughs> uh, you know, cause a lot of our, our work is, is trade specific. So our contract is different than what an iron worker or electrician or plumber or pipe fitter, you know, each of our, we have our own specific language that supports our, our, um, our building trade. And so as of now, 
to the best of my knowledge, local four, the elevator operators uh, and, and constructors, they are the only building trade that I was informed that actually have the 10 unpaid holidays that the remaining building trades have off. It's a paid holiday for them. So, so, and if they're asked to work on one of those holidays, those gentlemen and women get triple pay. Wow. Because a holiday itself is double time. And so now they're working that. So you, so, you know, you give them their regular pay plus the double time because it's a holiday. So um, they're, they're fortunate like that. <laughs> but the remaining building trades, we have uh, basically two weeks of unpaid leave a year. Um, and if MLK Day passes, it'll be the 11th um, unpaid holiday. Then I'm pushing for Juneteenth, so we're going to get 12 unpaid holidays. <laughs> get them off first and get them paid, right? <laughs> That's it. That's it. So, you know, it's a process, as you already know. Right, right. And so because you're under the building trades, I just want to explain it to folks who um, who don't might not understand this because they don't come from the building trade. So all the building trades are under a council and then in Boston and then Brian Doherty is the president of the Boston Building Trades Council. Right. So when you talked about having him send the letter, it was as a group for all the trades. Am I understanding that? No, no, that exactly is correct. But all all um, building trades do not operate, to my understanding as a council. Okay. Um, our, our IUPAC operates as a council and there's numerous councils throughout the country. We just so happen to be council 35. And uh, I think Rhode Island is district council nine. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what, Connect, what, what Connecticut is, <clears throat> but I, I wanna say there are 11, but I'm not certain. But um, they all have uh, you know, the same IUPAC councils um, throughout throughout the country. Great. Thanks, Anita. You have your hand up. Would you like to comment? Yes. So my interpretation of the question you just asked, the Building Trades Council in Boston is kind of like a conglomerate of all the, all the Building Trades Unions, but those that pay into them, so the carpenters aren't under the Building Trades Union, um, the Building Trades Council. Um, and then each state is different. In Rhode Island, the operating engineers are not under the Rhode Island Building Trades and the Teamsters are not under the Rhode Island Building Trades. But most unions are under the Rhode Island Building Trades. Uh, most unions are under their state Building Trades Council and the council works with the AFL-CIO because then all the other unions like your the nursing union would be under the AFL-CIO. So then that's how they all work together. And then the National Building Trades Council, so to speak, is the North American Building Trades Union, NAPTU, which is like what all the Building Trades Union councils are under. And then most of the Building Trades Unions are organized under the Building Trades Council. So when Jamie spoke about Mr. Brian Dougherty, he's a representative for the Boston Building Trades Council. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. I want to make sure people who are watching understand the intricacies of it. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. And I also, the, the, there's another difference too, as far as construction is the indoor, which is what the glaciers mostly do, glass, all the glass work, but there's the outside too, the heavy road and highway that where the iron workers and the, um, I'm, I'm a carpenter, so we'll be out there outside too. Um, and then the labor is pouring concrete and finishing it would be the cement finishes. So those are other trades that do the outside heavy road and highway work. And then I also wanted to interject because Jamie's doing a lot more than just to push for the Dr. King day. He's trying to push organizing behind the anti-black hate crime bill um, that's been put out by Mr. Ben Crump because that's a very important initiative to kind of address the anti-blackness um, to make sure that all union workers especially get paid the same way, have the same leadership opportunities, the same uh, advancement opportunities, the same 
um, full years of pension credit opportunities. So um, Boston, I think, is lucky on a couple of aspects of having uh, Travis Watson there to pull the data and share um, behind the scenes what the data is looking like as far as Black union construction workers and then um, having the Builders of Color Coalition and other organizations trying to work um, in collaboration with CBTU and the other Black orgs in Boston to try to push the initiative is, is huge as well. Thank you. Thank you. That's very interesting. Thank you. And so the, the membership of CBTU is, is across the sectors or is it predominantly building trades? It, it's across the sectors. To, to form a CBTU chapter, you must have 25 union members with five different union representations. Hmm. So currently we have seven different union representations in our chapter. And, and we have 42 uh, members and I'm looking to grasp more. And we're gonna put it right in the chat in the Facebook. So we're gonna put both your Facebook page for the Massachusetts CBTU as well as the, the national, C it's national, right? The CBTU national? Yes, That's it is. To yes, find out yes. more information about it, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that, that would be great. You know, and another thing I just wanted to add to the um, district councils, See, the district councils is a conglomerate of local unions. So as I said, I'm a glazer. Um, we have painters under our council. We have tapers under council. We have um, sign and display personnel under our council, as well as school custodians under our council. And we have uh, a print shop, which is Beantown Athletics. You're familiar with them over on Granite Ave? I, I utilize them to make all my banners and t-shirts. So they're also part of uh, District Council 35. Interesting, interesting. And do you offer training for CPTU members? We, we, we do not as of yet. Well, we're one year into our charter. We just wow. got received our charter uh, May 29th of 2022. Um, but that's something I'm looking to work on to uh, to be able to build and, and, and bring into the uh, organization. You can so you make donations, though. We do um, educational presentations all the time, and CBCU takes donations. Great. <laughs> and they'll be able to find that if they're interested in making a donation in the on the Facebook page or on the website? On the website. On the website, gotcha. Yes, gotcha. yes, on the website, yes. So you're a relatively baby organization, right? Because you've been in existence a little over a year. So, so where do you where do you hope to be in five years? Let me ask you that question. Like, what's your? If you had a magic wand. Where in five years would you like to be? I hope to be a full fledged operating uh, chapter with staff in five years. Um, I, I, I'm. I'm reaching out to an, an attorney to get our 501c3 nonprofit. So that's in the process as, as we speak. And, um, and then from there on, I'm just looking to, you know, continue to keep my feet to the street, uh, continue to network and talk with other local union members to, you know, come walk and join with us and, and help battle some of these systemic issues that uh, we are facing across the world and uh, you know, really take a stand and, and uh, bring some seriously and much needed change to today's society. Thank you. Anita, how about you? Where, where would you like to see CBTU Massachusetts in five years? Um, I would like to see CBTU representation um, at the AFL-CIO level, uh, with the with the governor, with the mayor of Boston, um, to make sure that there's a voice of uh, Black tradespeople at the table, at any table, especially right now in today's society where we're throwing around equity like it's just um, a word without substance or meaning behind it, making sure that 
we're actually inclusive when we're thinking about equity with an intentional lens and that comes from including um, lived experience. So making sure that CBTU has a seat at the table, um, pushing that agenda for black trade unionists. And I would like to see them in the schools, um, making sure that the information is getting out to the kids, re-educating families, that construction is not a menial job, that you know the trades is a really good career. People make a lot of money and then the retirement plans is you know second to none so you have your your pensions or your annuities going forward um and making sure that you know that you don't need a college degree to get into the trades but you can absolutely utilize the trades to get a college degree so i like to see cbtu be part of all of that um and then i love how cbtu is organized internationally so making sure that we're strengthening that international solidarity to make sure that black trades unionists across the nation are treated equally and fairly. I mean, we hear stories about nooses found on work sites in Chicago, not even 30 days ago, and this is 2023. So, you know, CBTU is needed, it's relevant, and Oh, I hope we just keep organizing and keep growing. Thank you for that. Thank you. So what other issues? I'm just going to ask a couple of things. So you have, um, so you're working on a couple of things. Are there any other like election trying to educate uh, CBTU members of the importance of what elections are like? Do you guys do any election work? Anything like that? Yes, yes, we do some election work. We don't get um, involved in a great deal of it. We, we do like to get out to vote, um, some phone banking. Actually, this Wednesday, uh, we're scheduled to have City Councilor G Julia Mejia um, attend our, our meeting. So because my thing is what I want to do is, is, is talk directly with the city councilors and and, and see where CBTU can fit in to do some work um, on the city level. Because one of my main goals is to have our CBTU Boston chapter, chapter impetus with local community groups, local organizations, and organized labor. And so that's what I'm pushing for. Uh, I just met with Brother Rasan Hall from the Urban League on Tuesday of last week, um, you know, to see what what Urban League does and how CBTU can play a part in the work that Urban League is currently doing. And he was ecstatic because um, they, in the month of June, they usually have a uh, career fair day. And there's usually not ever any building trades reps there. Hmm. So, so I told them, you know, to contact me prior to this. I can reach out to some of the local unions and see if I can get some uh, some building trades representatives to show up at, at your career fair because they do a lot of work with the youth, in uh, in, uh, in in some season, uh, men and women as well. But uh, they have a lot of focus on the youth. So I, I got to reach over to the Teen Empowerment Program, which is located in Roxbury on Warren Street, uh, possibly tomorrow. I'm gonna stop by there and, and talk with the young lady uh, that's the director of the teen empowerment and see if she will allow us, you know, I'll get some other trade unions together and we can go over and do a building trades presentation uh, for, 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 the, for the teens at the center. And in that way, you know, it, it'll help get the CBTU name out there. Uh, uh, it also show the work that we're doing um, it's because, you know, we, we, we look to be men and women of our words. We, we look to be about it, not just talk about it. Uh, just last year in November, I did a building trades presentation over at Wentworth University. It went exceptionally well. The children were very attentive. They had a host of questions and I really enjoyed it. 
And uh, I'm still in contact with a couple of them. Some uh, are interested in the trades and a few others decided that uh, the hands-on part wasn't for them. So they're gonna remain to stay in school. <laughs> but for those that reach out to the trade, we're still in conversation. So I'm looking to help them. There's such opportunities in the trades. I think people don't realize that, you know? So yes. get out there and explain that to people, you know, explain that to people, different programs and, you know, interesting. interesting. Exactly. You know, it's, it's like the, the work of the late, great Booker T. Washington. That's what he, that's what he uh, pronounced and he promoted. Uh, you know, if you can work with your hands, you can always make a living. Mm -hmm. and, and he was steadfast on um, learning a trade. And here we are today. Exciting, exciting. Um, so how long again have you been a glazier? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been glazing for 27 years. Wow, wow. What's yeah. the biggest change have you seen in the, in, in the trades in the 27 years? Would you the say? biggest change- I needed the same question. <laughs> The, the, the biggest, biggest change, change. Mm -hmm. the biggest change I've seen, in, in, you know, which everyone has seen throughout you know, life here is technology and in the rapid advancement in the equipment and the, the tools and the materials that we use to do our jobs today. When I first started, I started at the Northeastern Science Lab I remember as if it was yesterday, it was December 18th, 1995. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know a thing about the building trades. Only thing I knew about, you know, the people that were melanated like me that lived in the community where I lived, uh, I'd hear how they were constantly laid off. Hmm. So I went, I went to a Volk Tech High School, Madison Park High School. And, you know, this is me at 16, 17, I'm saying, um, the object is to get a job and keep a job, not work yourself out of a job. So I was like, I'm not going to the building trades. So I went to, I went to the business cluster and, and I graduated there and I went to Franklin Institute for, for, for computer tech. Hmm. And when I graduated from Franklin, you know, I'm going on interviews right out of school. Um, Everyone denied me saying, hey, we look for someone's six months experience. I said, my resume says, yeah, I'm right out of school. Have you seen that? Yeah, well, we thought you had a little more experience, blah, 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 blah. So I ended up meeting a fellow glazer at a, at a service station I was working and he told me what to do. I did it and here I am working myself out of a job. <laughs> Leading CBTU. <laughs> Leading CBTU, yes. Yep, yep, yep. How about you, Anita? What's the biggest What's the biggest change you've seen in your career in the trades? No, oh, you might have lost her. <laughs> yeah, she might have stepped away. Exactly. The, the, the other change I've seen too are, are the large number of women that are in the trades now so that's that's another rapidly growing uh advancement for the trades is, is uh you know having more more women to be part of the the uh the construction industry which is a which is a great great look we were just talking about that before we started with our, our labor guild staff who are providing the tech support that you know I'm going to date myself. I've been in the labor movement over 20 years and, you know, yeah. it's a work. I come out of higher ed before I came to work for the nurses and uh, you'd see a job site and there might be one iron worker that was a woman. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> look, there's a sister. Uh, and now it's just, it's, it's calm. It's unusual not to see one now. You know what I mean? That's right. That's right. Clusters of four, there's one woman in that. That's huge progress in my lifetime within the labor movement. Because like I said, I remember it was it quickly got around campus. Look, there's a woman up there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a long way in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it certainly has. And um, and I would say programs like Building Pathways or if you want to say a few words about the Building Pathways pro program, which is a pre-apprenticeship program, which is another way to encourage young people and to, to check it out. Right? I think they do kind of a little bit of all the trades so that um, young people can get a, a, a taste of it 
and then decide if they want to go into an apprenticeship program. So there's a lot of different programs out there that exposes people to what the trades is all about, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah, the Building Pathways program is a great program. I, I used to, prior to the pandemic, I used to go over and, and do uh, IUPAC presentations to the, to the incoming students there. But uh, it's been kind of shut down since the pandemic. Uh, a couple of their directors that I was familiar with have moved on to different tasks. So I don't really have a connection with Building Pathways anymore. But um, I, I did used to go over and do presentations. I actually helped sponsor a, a young woman into, um, into the glazing local 1044, which I'm in, um, from the building trade, from the um, building pathways. I had gone there to do a presentation. And uh, she goes, oh, you're with IUPAT? I said, yes, I am. She says, oh, I got accepted as an apprentice. I said, what did you get accepted as? She says, I got accepted as a painter. I said, sister, do you really want to work? She says, yes. I says, how serious are you about working? She said, I'm very serious. I says, I says, call Eric Redding. You know Eric, right? She says, yes. I says, call Eric. Tell me you want to switch to be a glazer. Um, she, she did it. She called. She made the switch. Within three weeks, she was working at the uh, Encore Casino. Wow. 70 hours a week. Wow. <laughs> she, went from, she went from unemployment to overemployment 70 hours a week and uh she she's still in the trade she's doing well i just had a conversation with her last week and uh she's she's very appreciative of it so let's talk a little bit about uh cbtu so when when do you meet and where do you meet so if people are interested in joining up with you yeah we meet on the fourth wednesday of every month we have an upcoming meeting this wednesday we meet at 25 Colgate Road, Rosendale, Mass, 02131, on the third floor in the conference room, which is also my local union hall. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what are the topics that you cover? I mean, do you have a, a set agenda or is it kind of business? And then you, do, you, do you pick up different topics? Like you were talking about having a city councilor come in from Boston. Do you have different, different things that you talk about? Yeah, we have different things we talk about. I try not to uh, center too much around me because I'm looking to get the members more engaged and more involved with the chapter because you know this chapter is much bigger than I am, and so I you know I, I want the I want the members to uh, to begin to stand up and speak out, and so when we when I open up the meeting, I do a roll call of officers. Uh, I do the president's report, the vice president's report, the treasury report, and then I have the good of the chapter report. Um, I have a new business and an old business report, and then I have a communications report. So in case anyone has anything in the community that they may want us to get involved with, that they may have seen or heard of, then the members can bring that forward. And we'll, we'll, we'll sit down, we'll talk it over and say, yes, that's something we can do or nope, that's out of our jurisdiction. <laughs> we can't handle that or, you know, but oftentimes we, we do we agree upon what we want to do and work in unison to get the task done. Great. And how do you interact with the, uh, is it an international, the international CBTU? Is there a national international? Well, well, CBTU is broken up in regions. Okay. Uh, Massachusetts is part of region one. So from north to the south, uh, we have Canada, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey. We, we all comprise of region one. And, and, and I have a regional director. And if I have any questions or concerns, I generally either phone call or email her. Her name is Sharon Love Lady Hall. I either email or phone call Sister Sharon and she responds and tells me what I need to know. And are there, are there things that uh, the, the, I would say the higher level, right, of CBTU, are there things that they work on federally as well? I mean, I know you talked a lot about here, what you're working on here in Massachusetts, but are there similar things that they're working on on a federal, on a national level? or international, because Canada is part of it. Yes, they, they do a lot of work um, internationally. They do a boatload of work in uh, South America, 
uh, in Africa. I know, no, I'm going back a number of years, but in 1990, when the late great Nelson Mandela uh, made his voyage to the States, uh, I read, of course, afterwards, CBTU fundraised quarter of a million dollars for his trip. Wow. And uh, I was there that historic day at Madison Park High School, Roxbury, Mass, 1990, when Mr. Mandela was there. Uh, I didn't have any knowledge of CBTU then. I didn't learn of CBTU till 2016 when my district council uh, sent me to my very first general conventions, which is her held during the month of May. So 2016, month of May, I went down to DC. I was really thrown aback by the by the 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 camaraderie of the members. I, I was like, wow, where have I been all these years? I said, I can't let this convention go in vain. I got to get back to Massachusetts and start a CBTU chapter. So 2016, that same year, October, I had my very first CBTU meeting. And I just kept, kept at it. Um, I was very resilient. I was determined uh, March 1st of 2022, I got my 25th member to form a chapter. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. So that took some time and I'm still working at it and still going at it and still looking to increase the numbers. That's the thing about organizing, right? Sometimes it's the little little steps along the way and then it's like, whoo. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, I've had a host of small steps along the way. <laughs> and you know, I'm still taking small steps along the way. And, uh, but you know, I, I know in time, um, as, as we begin to speak more uh, and, and uh, introduce ourselves more to others, uh, the members will, will begin to come. Mm -hmm. A lot of it, that's why I wanted to, amplify the work that you're doing in this organization because it's important for people to hear about it you know so we want to be able to amplify it for you so I'm going to ask Andrew whether or not on Facebook because we're running this on Facebook live whether or not there are any questions in the chat uh not that I'm seeing Lisa no worries <laughs> we'll take it we'll take it we'll take it Let's see, what else is I going to ask you? What is there anything else that you want to talk about, about CBTU? Or, and, and you talked a little bit about the Urban League. Are there other community groups that you're working with or that you're trying to work with? Well, um, I'm, I'm also a member of the NAACP. Um, so I'm looking to work, work with them as well. I'm also a member of the APRI, a Philip Randolph Institute. So I'm looking to do something with them. And I'm also a member of LACLA, uh, Labor Council for Latin American Advancement. Because my thing is I, I would like to do, because LACLA, APRI, and CBTU are all constituency groups of the AFL-CIO. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm also trying to reach out to APALA, Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance. Because um, I'm looking to bring all the constituency groups together um, for a social event, and then you know get to meet and greet one another, and possibly you know work in numbers um, that way. Mm -hmm. But that again is a process, and it's a challenge because everyone has different schedules, different agendas, and it, it it's not easy. I hear you. Whoever schedules meetings, God bless them. <laughs> right. <laughs> The more people you try to schedule a meeting with, the more complicated that it gets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it does. It certainly does. But you know, you know, I'm all about you know togetherness and bringing bringing people together. You know, we 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 you know we 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 say in solidarity, uh, it, it's preached, but it's oftentimes not practiced. You know, and and I, and I try to um, be about it, not just talk about it. If I say I'm going to do something, I I do my very best to get it done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting the many different hats that you wear. I think a lot of us in labor do that, right? I mean, I work for the m and <laughs> I'm on many central labor councils, <laughs> plus the, yes. another labor guild. And then how, how does it all intersect? 
and yes. it's all about building up community, right? It's all building up, up our community. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and the thing is, it's, it's all so relative, you know, it's all so relative. And then you, you, you meet others that have the same common ground as yourself when you're doing this type of organizing in uh, labor work. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it's fabulous. Terrific. It's terrific. And the people that you made, it's so interesting. So interesting. Mm -hmm. Like I said, mm -hmm. I've been in the labor movement 20 years and students I met back in, when they were in students labor projects are now, you know, directors are on, <laughs> have, have, are now in leadership positions 20 years later it's just so so interesting and fascinating and wonderful really that you know the yes. one thing about the labor movement is that there's opportunities for us all to kind of move along, move along yes there are yes there are so Thank anita you. do you want to add anything i think you're driving do you want to add anything um no i think brother jamie hit it all this strength is in the numbers and um the more we organize, the more boots on the ground, um, the more we have our voices heard because we all fall under labor, but um, the intersectionalities for what Black trade unionists face is different than what um, white trade unionists face or Latino or Asian, like Brother Jamie says. So it's important that we're all working together to make sure that we got equitable worker rights for everybody. And I mean, I also just want to, I also always think about falling back to unionism and members' rights and workers' rights. I think that the unions themselves have gotten away from there, like maybe power corrupts and absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Um, forgot who it was that said that but I believe that sometimes that fits and I actually really like Labor Guild and what you do with um, talking about workers rights and making sure that the grassroots organizing and members organizing and bringing back a democratic union and so I, I like all of that stuff because I think that it's important, unions are important, and I know they get a lot of bad rap because of bad apples that do certain things, um, but the, the idea of members banding together to negotiate your contract, negotiate your holidays, negotiate your pay, those kind of things, I think is um, important to make sure that we have, right? Eight hours and double pay and go electrical workers. Um, I mean, the elevator mechanics with, triple pay right if you're gonna get a holiday negotiate for, for for it to be paid and I think that just shows the power of collective bargaining and contract negotiation and I think that that's really important that workers understand that that that's what it's all about is workers rights but on the other hand I want unions to understand that they need the workers so to respect them um remember where they come from and make sure that they're equitable in their endeavors and equity starts at the top, not just illusion of inclusion initiatives. And um, since this is uh, being recorded, I'll throw in DEI initiatives, do it right. You can't have white people leading diversity initiatives is disrespectful to people of color, have people of color leading diversity issues because we know how we wanna be treated. Um, and we absolutely have good ideas and can absolutely save ourselves. You know, we want allies and accomplices and partners and collaborations, but yes, please respect us enough to know that we know what's gonna save us. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. One thing I like about the Labor Guild is the ability to have a safe space to have difficult conversations, right? <laughs> I think we have to have this space to be able to have conversations that sometimes are uncomfortable too, you know, because um, then that's, that way we can have these discussions in order to try to come up with some solutions. But uh, yeah. I think, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, I just want to add one more thing uh, about CBTU. CBTU is celebrating its 51st anniversary this year. Wow. Uh, the organization was formed in 1972 
And Lise, I'm going to give you a little homework assignment. Okay, I'm writing it down on my piece of paper. <laughs> so, so seeing that you, now there were five founding members, uh, Charles Hayes, uh, Cleveland Robinson, uh, Nelson Jack Edwards, William Bill Lucy. Oh, I know him from my Ask Me days. <laughs> then, oh, wow. That's what I wanted you to hear. And then the, the last gentleman is William Simon. And so that's what I wanted to bring to your attention, seeing that you were an Ask Me member, because uh, he, I don't, I'm not sure which local union, but he was the secretary treasurer for nearly four decades. The national, and, national, lovely man. I had the opportunity to meet him. What oh, a man. wonderful. But so, a, so what a lovely man. He's going to be celebrating his 90th birthday wow. on Thanksgiving of this year. And uh, I, I, I missed him at this year's general convention because last year we were in LA and he had fallen and I think broken his hip. So he was still in recovery. So he wasn't with us this past May in New Orleans for the uh, for the 52nd general convention. And I so missed him dearly because I, 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 I asked him a host of questions. You know, one of the main questions I asked him was, how long did it take you to perform the organization? And he told me in, uh, in the work that he himself and the other four members put in, it just blew me away. I'm like, wow. It was so, so it's phenomenal. I said, but it's only me. So I can't do half the work that the five of you have done. But, uh, you know, I stayed with it and uh, I persevered and uh, I, I was able to bring my chapter into fruition. Excellent. Good for you. So, so terrific. Um, and the one thing about Bill Lucy, I'll say, is that I went to a national convention at AFSME. And um, he's a very humble man. You know, he's a very humble man about his accomplishments. And it was fascinating because he talked about um, the I am a man, the sanitation strike, you know. Mm -hmm. and also, mm -hmm. um, he was there with Martin Luther King, you know, on, the, on that final day. Um, so when you see the pictures of him up on the, um, you know, when they were in the hotel and he's up on the thing. And it was just so amazing, his, his perspective of it. And such a gracious man, too. He had such advice. I was a young kid <laughs> when I first started yeah. that out. So such great advice for young trade unionists. Um, such a lovely man. So he's such a great. So it's so, so wonderful to see Bill Lucy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's really a phenomenal guy. I went to over to uh, Council 93 over on Beacon Street there. And I don't remember the gentleman's full name. His first name was Jim. I don't recall his Jim last Durkin, name. Maybe? maybe Jim Durkin. Yes, yes, yeah, Jim Durkin. Guy. So, so Jim told me a story. Uh, it's really, really funny. He said, um, Mr. Lucy was called to go down to, you know, after the assassination of um, Dr. Martin Luther King, Mr. Lucy was called to go to uh, Memphis to, to, to help with the, uh, the strike and everything. And so he parked his car at Logan Airport and, um, you know, he thought he was just going for a few days. He was down there for eight weeks, he says, right? Was his car there when he came back? <laughs> yeah, but it, it had an $8,000 uh, parking violation on it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh my <laughs> he said he had the most expensive parking violation in the history of Ask Me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, so I, I wasn't aware that he wasn't going to be in uh, New Orleans. That was my question. I said, hey, Mr. Lucy, where'd you park today? <laughs> but I didn't have the chance to ask him because he wasn't present with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was hilarious. Oh, great stuff. So um, let's see, Andrew, we have a question. Yeah, and it looks like Jamie covered it, um, but just someone was wondering how long CBTU had been around. So, Jamie, I think you said since 1971, is that right? 72. 72. Perfect. That's nationally. And then locally, right? 
Yeah, yeah locally 2020. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. And show everybody your t-shirt. Yeah, get a stand up. There you go. <laughs> Great t shirt. <laughs> Thank you. Great t shirt. Any final thoughts as we wrap up? Jamie, I'll start with you and then I'll ask Anita. Any final thoughts that for our audience? Um, well, I'm so elated to be here with you all this evening. Um, if, if you have any other conversation corners that you would like to include me in, please do consider me. Thank you. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Anita, any final thoughts? Um, no, just, Sound well, like yes, it. get involved in CBTU in your area. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, for more information about the Labor Guild, you can check out our website. They'll put it on the in the chat on Facebook, as well as please check out CBTU Massachusetts. We hope you join them because they're a great organization. Um, so with that, thank you very much. And we'll see you next time on Conversation Corner. <laughs>